<laughs> All right. Well, this is the Colony episode. We're here with Ryan Guler. Um, Ryan, thanks for coming on the show. What's your role with the brand? Like, because uh, you kind of are more than just a rider at this point. You sort of have something to do with the direction of the team and everything. Pretty much, um, yeah. With with the team, Clint always kind of comes to to us guys that have been there since day one mm -hmm. and just be like, yo, should we put him on? What's the long run? What do you think of this guy and whatnot? Um, I guess Clint has so many roles. I guess back in the day, like we don't have a contract. Like it's just a right. lifetime deal type thing. Yeah. Like he, he's like, yo, you have your family, just you're a part of it for life. So I, knowing that, knowing like I don't have a one year salary to okay, really push it, knowing that you're kind of around forever, it makes you want to do more for him, mm -hmm. like in so to speak. Um, there was talks back in the very, very beginning of it um, about being a partner, putting in money and stuff like that, but being in America and the company being in Australia, there was nothing I could do but be a writer for him. So it started out, out like that and then it was always a parts company at first and then it just blew up to what it is today mm -hmm. and being complete bikes and whatnot. So yeah, it's, it's tough. I'm, I'm so pumped for Clint to, to go through all this and, and make, make something out of it. It's How amazing. did you and uh, Clint, we're talking about Clint Miller, the owner of Colony. How did you guys first uh, become friends back, back in the day? All right. Um, this is a pretty crazy one. So back in the day, um, I started riding when I was five years old and I always need somebody to look after me. And so we had one babysitter named Glenn Stracy, And then I guess Clint was kind of like a second babysitter. He, he was a, like a full-time rider just then. But uh -huh. then my mum my and my dad would just always see him at the skate park. He was always riding and just be like, yo, if you go on a trip or if you're at the skate park, like, and you take care of Ryan, like, we'll, we'll throw you some dollars and whatnot. And yeah. just like, his whole friendship just became through the family. He was more friends with my dad than I guess kind of with me. I was too young to really be able to have like a good friendship. But then just over the years, he would take me to contests, take me under his wing and just show me the ropes. That's how it all came about. Were you one of those riders who was super obvious even when you were really young that you were going to go places of riding or even when you were a kid? I guess it, yeah. To, to say yeah without trying to be too cocky yeah, about it. Yeah, you don't worry yeah. about that. Um, it was just, I was always just trying to keep up with the older guys. Mm -hmm. So I remember like Tim Woods being the first to do a backflip, but then almost instantly being like, wow, like we should all start trying backflips. And I was like crazy young, like eight or nine years old and just always trying to keep up with those guys. And I guess when a young rider hangs around with the older guys, they just put him in check straight away. Like if I rock up wearing a pink shirt or something like that, oh, they'd yeah. be like, yeah, never do that again. Yeah. And, they, and you just grow up so quick. And yeah. so like, I couldn't even really hang out with any kids at school. Right. I, I just felt like they were all immature and on the weekends they'd be like, hey, you wanna like go throw toilet paper out of the house? And I'd be like, no man, I'm going to the skate park and do like cool stuff, so yeah. yeah. You just made the move from Greenville to Costa Mesa? Yep. Uh, what, what prompted the move and uh, how's it going? I love it, Costa Mesa is, a, is absolutely amazing. It was a big choice between Riverside or Costa Mesa, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to, I guess, enjoy the rest of my life. I wanna be at the beach on a hot day, I wanna just live it. So. Uh, the reason for the move is um, Greenville is amazing. I'm never going to put it down. It, was, it definitely got me to where I am today. But it's just such a small town. Mm -hmm. And then there was already people leaving. And I think right when like Alan Cook left, Colin McKay left, and um, Alistair Witten left, that was like the breaking point where I was like, hey, everyone, all my good friends that I looked up to and rode with, they're all kind of... is out of there. Yeah, is, they, is the scene kind of different now? Oh, it's, it's done. Yeah. Like, uh, I know Josh... Josh Perry's holding it down and Rob Darden in, in um, Harrington for a bit. I heard Harrington's trying to make the move out yeah, here. Yeah. So it's, it's in my eyes, it, it is done. Like maybe there'll be a new scene. The new generation and everything. But yeah. in terms of the, that era, that generation yeah. of you and your peers, yeah. Yeah, the, the, I guess the generation that I saw was like the Colin McKay and all the older guys. But then a whole Aussie scene came over. Mm -hmm. And it was cool for a little bit, but then it just became kind of like too young of a scene. It was like almost like high school drama type going on. It wasn't like everybody just wanted to go downtown and get super wasted and and then in the daytime ride. Nobody was really hanging out with each other type deal. So I was just like, man, I'm going to pack up and move. I guess I'd done it for six years. So I was in a routine of like doing all the hard tricks and, and the hardest lines straight away, like as soon as I went to the warehouse. But it was more putting on a demo type mm -hmm. instead of breaking okay. off and like riding in a new direction. I was stuck on doing like 1080s on the resi every single day. If I didn't 1080 or double flip in, in a session, I felt like I had a bad session. But then here in Costa Mesa, I'll go to the skate park and like 
it makes you nervous just to like 450 a hip or uh-huh. like just a concrete bowl. So just r- learning to ride faster, go higher and stuff like that, it's it's almost bringing new life back into BMX for me. Who's your uh, your crew out there? Who do you ride with? Um, Anthony Napolitan, Drew Bazanzan, um, Drew Bazanzan and um, Bidosh all move, they live four miles away from mm-hmm. the house. So I'm hanging out with them a lot. Then there's also like Victor and Hucker. Hucker's been a Costa Mesa kid forever. So um, yeah, there's a lot. And then if, if anything, we always try and go to Riverside and hang out with like the dirt guys. So Heath Pinner and those types. There's, it's actually an amazing scene. What's like your split between skate park street and trails with percentage wise? It depends on just uh, the week, mm-hmm. who's in town, who's not. If um, Heath Pin is in town, because his backyard is like one of my favorites to ride, I'll, I'll most likely be in Riverside probably three times a day. So it'll be more dirt that week. But then um, even sometimes, like uh, Chris Hughes lives seven houses down from me. Yeah. And if he's the only guy that I can really ride with, he's more into just going out and riding the street and finding stuff. So that's been more it. And if I've got a film for like a, a video or whatever, I'll, I'll call like Chris Long or a filmer. And uh, that's when I'm more just looking for street because everything in Costa Mesa is like new to me so mm-hmm. it's all like amazing to ride so I don't want to like blow out and just I don't ride skate parks like seven days a week so you, you seem like, very uh, invigorated with the riding and stuff you seem to have real positive about it right now I just yeah man um, big move did it yeah I guess ha- having such a big change in my life just changed everything about it my riding's different I just want to I don't know be ride faster and more stylish and uh, I guess just almost break it down go back to the very basics like if you can do a bar spin do it to the actual like perfect bar spin and those feelings of just going on the trails and doing a dip three and landing like perfect is i guess better where back in the day i would have as soon as i got to the trails just tried to huck a seven and even if i landed low or whatever i probably would have fist pumped be like yeah that was the best feeling ever but to me now it's not really that it's more risk versus reward and what feels amazing and just being on my bike and trying to air higher is you think a, it's just you kind of being a little bit more far removed from the contest mentality and the the i don't want to insult greenville but you know sort of the mentality out there yeah it, it definitely is as soon as i i went there and just went to a skate park so you, you see how kids ride it's so different like in greenville everybody's fighting to take their next run it's just like a sweat fashion um session where everyone just wants to sweat it out just power out all their hard tricks and just do amazing runs where here it's just like you go to the skate park and you, you'll sit around and talk to a kid for an hour and then yeah. drop into a line and come back and but you have an amazing session. Are you uh, also surfing and snorkeling a lot Crystal man? Yeah um, just like I said just trying to enjoy life as well the other day it was in the hundreds and right. so there was nothing else to do but just to be in the water so um, bought a $150 surfboard and just trying to go with my mates and just have a good time and it's that also like kind of relates back to bmx like as soon as you're done doing stuff like that like surfing and whatnot when you go ride you you enjoy it more like it's not just all about riding like you just have an appreciation like oh okay now now it's time to ride let's let's go have a fun session so it just works out back to the colony um are there any products in particular i don't know how clued in you are on uh, all the new stuff but what are the new products and everything um a lot of it is just almost trying to simplify it instead of all the crazy colors that Clint used to do back uh-huh. in the day. It's more just like this year is uh, just black pedals, but with uh, colored spindles. Okay. So that's like a pretty pretty big deal. And then um, mainly just trying to be on top of everybody on colorways. Like uh, if the whole trend is like going away from purple, then like we don't want to be stuck on purple right. parts just floating around. So I know Clint puts like a lot of focus on that and then just adds videos, um, web updates, just keeping the riders, like I said before, Clint has such a big role, but in product wise, it's more, that's more Clint's hands on. I have my uh, um, official stem, sprocket, and then we changed dagger forks and dagger bars, and now I have the living frame and living complete bike. And I guess at first I did all help Clint, we all we all put in input to, to make it to what it is now, but now they're selling well, so we just, update the colors more regularly than most companies. We don't just put out one or two for the year. We'll update them like once every three months. I forgot to ask this before about your boy, uh, Zach Miner. Definitely one of the best riders on the Colony team. He just made the move too, right? Or is he just out there temporarily? And, uh, no. Or he's just visiting? Yeah, he's just visiting. Oh, okay. He's actually in Vegas right now. He came and stayed with me for, I think, a week in California. Yeah. Him and his girlfriend are here in Vegas, and I hope they don't get married. 
like you do with his last girlfriend. <laughs> and then, um, then they go to New York. Okay. So he's just living it right now, just traveling. Yeah, and uh, but he's more of a street rider. So is is he the one like pushing you to go out and ride street and stuff with him? He actually wanted to ride parks every day. Oh really? That's what, like he, I guess he um, came off like a, a sore ankle or something like that. So he was more just like, hey, let's go warm up on the skate parks. But then when we did go ride street, he just shut it down. Like we we went to a kink rail and yeah, like, sort of gap over there. ice and stuff like just stuff i don't even look at that stuff like, <laughs> uh, i like trying to find transition stuff on streets and lower stuff where he's just looking for the mental stuff the uh the sweet tooth frame i'm not i'm not going to try to say his name because i think i'm gonna fuck it up how do you say his last name alex heim heim okay uh, yeah um that that frame i've seen a lot of buzz about online and alex is like one of the craziest young riders uh is he in australia is he like huge right now i feel like he doesn't really just him in general. Anyone that meets him just instantly falls in love with that kid. He's one of those kids that we just know that he's going to take over Colony. He's going to take over everything. And it just depends. He's so young that you just don't know what directions he's going to go in. If he goes to a comp, there's been comps in Australia that he doesn't even show up for. But then when he does, he'll absolutely kill it and ride amazing. To me, he's kind of like a Garrett Reynolds where he could, whatever he puts his foot down and says, hey, I want to start a company or I want to ride street and film a video part he's going to do it to the he's fullest gonna and, and it's going to right now he can do absolutely what he wants he could come to america and be like yo i want to live in greenville and destroy every contest and he will and then he could go the other way and just be like hey i just want to go visit live the life and film a couple of video parts. And how old is he? i think he just turned uh 16 or 17. Jeez. And he, uh, what, what's his mentality at right now riding wise like what kind of dude is he like riding he's He's so young that uh, he just came off a big injury where oh, he okay. couldn't get surgery So because of his growth plate, they called it. Oh, so okay. he took him a long time. So um, right now he's just trying to finish school and ride as much as he can. But he's been trying to film a web edit once a week or he got a GoPro. So he's like, he's just bringing out stuff all the time. So right now he's really into taking photos and, and filming. But like I said, like on his Instagram, he's like over 10,000 followers. Oh, really? On Facebook, he just has a million followers on that. Like, So it's, if the kids out there don't know about Alex Heim. Follow at Alex Heim. You got to get on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, the two other dudes that really stand out that I hear a lot of even big name pros bring up and stuff is uh, Liam Zingbergs and Brock Olive too. Both yeah. like unbelievably technical street riders. Like yeah. Liam came out and stayed with us and he, he had that web video. He did the toothpick to the tail whip and that was a uh, pretty... Groundbreaking. I never met Brock Olive. Do you know him well? I know Brock Olive fairly well. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done a few road trips together, and both those kids are uh, next level. They're just amazing. Like, Clint was spot on putting them on the team. Um, the team in general for Colony is just off the hook. Like, right. it's when we go on a trip or something like that, everyone just gets along. Like, especially, um, especially uh, Liam Zing, but he's, mm -hmm. he's like a character. The first time I met him, I didn't want to kind of make a bad impression, but straight away he was like, Going to shake my hand and then like, <laughs> like giving the wheel, you just like crack up, start laughing yeah. at him. He's a cool kid. Yeah, with him, I yeah. The second I met him, I was like, oh my god, I love this kid. I want to yeah. hang out with him all the time. Yeah. yeah. He thinks I'm mad at him because I didn't respond to him on Facebook. Like he, he thought I hated him for like six months because <laughs> I, I guess I didn't respond enough on on Facebook. But yeah, those dudes are both uh, unbelievable. Brock, the the pace over tail whip on like foot tall rails is that's probably the craziest one in my book. The craziest thing is uh, we went on a colony road trip down through Melbourne and uh, we went to a flat rail session where it was two tall yellow rails Right. and he he would be like hey Coops would you want to film this line and he wouldn't even know what he was going to go for he'd just like hop into an ice and if he was leaning one way it would be like over bars but if he was leaning this way it would be like 180 bars or tail whip out and it was just like Jeez. Coops and me would be like yeah what, what do you want to film just so we make sure we get it and he'd be like oh I'm not real sure but I'm going to hop into ice and then whatever happens just happens and he's he rides like that and it's insane just like I kind of understand it like if I was in a manual and then I was leaning towards this way I'd yeah. like go for a 180 but he's just like completely next level like me and um, uh, Valvoline were on the same trip and we're like hey we should just take our pegs off so we don't have to ride these <laughs> spots with him because we're just looking like fools. What uh, were you in on the uh, the little drama that went down with uh, well not drama but Colony deciding that they're not going to do Flatland anymore? No, you that know was about that? that was all Clint's decision. I understand. I guess small like, market, it's small tough, market. Yeah. Just he actually had Clint is um, I think he put something online just talking about it or the the press release but Clint used to be an amazing flatlander mm -hmm. he's done it he started as flatland and then that broke into mini ramp but you can see it in his like front brake 
tech tricks on ramps and stuff like that. He was oh, yeah. a flatlander, but well, he's from the generation where you just kind of you rode flatland anyway. Yeah, and, and he's such a technical front end rider that yeah. yeah. So I think like Colony in general is one of the biggest companies to help push flatland, but when it just gets like beating a dead horse over and over and nobody's buying like the parts or it's just not a big enough market then like how can you sell yeah, it because i because i see clint's side of it where you go to taiwan and you order a flatland frame you have to you got minimum orders right. you can't just be like hey we just want two this month yeah and just try and sell them like it's minimum orders in every single month and they just stack up in the warehouse so it just had to come to a decision it, it sucks to see it go like that but then hopefully a flatlander will be like well we don't have to comp- against colony making products maybe we should start our own company and then they can deal with yeah. it so to speak i mean they have the big industry scene around not that big but they have a bunch of their own companies but uh monster and vans anything going on uh, with them i know you were just on this monster trip the monster trip was insane if you haven't seen it just check out the web videos right. uh mons tour and it i uh, couldn't believe it we had little wayne's um rv to travel in <laughs> and then we stayed at the bosses uh, house in Salt Lake City and it was a six million dollar house or something like that and it was just everyone had their own room and it, I don't know I can't even explain it. I can't even go on a road trip anymore for a while After just, that be- one? just because of that one it was just too <laughs> retarded wow um, and in Vans Protec um, Vans is pushing their new shoe so that's cool they just had that contest mm-hmm. in um, Ocean City um, Brett crash, so I guess big shout out to Brett. Yeah. Stay strong, buddy. Um, we're all thinking of you every single day, and I hope you get a full recovery and see you on the park soon. Um, other than that, I know behind the scenes, Vans is helping ARF to right. help Brett come back for through recovery. And then other than that, just uh, trying to film web edits for those guys. Do you think we're ever going to be able to get Jerry Batters on here? You should have told me. I would have brought him with me. <laughs> Jerry would love to be on this. Thing. Really? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure. I, if we could get Jerry to open up, he's got stories. Right? Oh, he's got stories for days. He'll yeah. tell you about every single ride, good or bad. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. All right. Well, that's uh, most of the questions I had. Anything Anything left to say? No. Thanks. Um, check out all, all my sponsors, Colony.com, Monster Vans, all of them. Thanks for watching. Come up, Rules. <laughs> Bonza. Right. That was dope. Thanks, man.